I'm interested in the origin of our species, Homo sapiens, in Africa, the uh, emergence of Homo sapiens outside of Africa into Eurasia. In particular, I'm interested in the timing of the movement of modern humans out of Africa, and also the roots or, or the corridors that they took. So there's a big question as to whether or not they took coastal routes all the way to Australia, or whether they used inland terrestrial routes. The traditional theory has been that modern humans speciated in Africa, and they moved out of Africa in one wave around 60,000 years ago, and they rapidly moved across uh, Eurasia at 60,000 years ago to reach Australia by around 50,000 years ago, employing coastal routes. Our research has actually challenged that traditional theory. And in fact, uh, some of the field work uh, that we have been doing uh, in the southern route, that is uh, in Arabia and places like South Asia, show that, in fact, we have archaeological sites and even fossils that are older than 60,000 years ago. And lo and behold, they are found uh, in inland terrestrial settings, suggesting that coastal routes were either used rarely or not at all. This is an important question in human evolution because we really want to know, of course, about the history of our species, but we also want to know about our abilities. Uh, how, how did we become what we are as a species today all around the Earth? I personally uh, was interested in this question um, because there were big gaps in our knowledge uh, with respect to out of Africa. And so I have done uh, large field projects in places like Arabia and India over the last 30 years to try to fill in a lot of the gaps that we have in the archaeological record. So we start our work uh, employing satellite imagery, for example. We map places like Arabia uh, and Africa. And in doing the satellite imagery work, we have seen that in the past, there were many rivers and lakes, and those rivers and lakes were interconnected. So we can actually trace rivers and lakes from Africa uh, into the Sinai and then into Arabia. We start with that, that satellite imagery, and armed with it, we go to the field and conduct archeological survey, first of all, to verify if in fact, our satellite images are correct. In the field work that we have performed to date, we have seen that our mapping is mostly accurate. In fact, there are rivers and lakes on uh, what are today desert environments, in desert environments. So, so we know in the past, these places were very wet. When we find the rivers and lakes, we go about doing archeological survey in search of archeological or paleontological sites. And lo and behold, when we've done our surveys, we can see that there were many sites in the past associated with the rivers and lakes. And then after we verify their archeological sites, we want to know something about their age, of course. So we go about doing very careful and precise excavations. Well, our excavations have been really rather remarkable. We have actually shown that uh, uh, along the edges of the freshwater lakes, we even have the bones of hippos, for example. So hippos are dependent on deep freshwater lakes. So we have proven that we had uh, drinkable water uh, with findings of hippos. And we even have freshwater shells and we have fish uh, bones. And along the edges of the lakes themselves, we actually have stone tools. And these stone tools are very similar to the stone tools that we find in Africa. So we think that populations moved into, from Africa into Arabia using very similar stone tool technology. All of this together uh, is very important because we're showing a very close association between freshwater lakes 
and paleontological sites, as well as archaeological sites. Now, we've gone about dating these archaeological and paleontological sites, and we have ages on these sites going back to 200,000 years ago. The sites are not only 200,000 years old, but they represent multiple phases of uh, wet episodes. So we have sites, for example, 200,000 years old, 125,000 years old, 100,000 years old, and 80,000 years old. And lo and behold, all of these archaeological sites, which we think represent Homo sapiens itself, are much older than our traditional theory of 60,000 years ago for the emergence of, uh, of modern humans out of Africa. Now, the other importance of these very old sites in Arabia is that they're in inland terrestrial settings along the edges of rivers and lakes. And these are places uh, in deserts today, so they were previously humid environments. And so we know these early hunter-gatherers were moving across Arabia in inland terrestrial settings. This is very far from the coasts. Now, the coasts were traditionally thought to be the root of expansion of modern humans out of Africa. And we have proven that modern humans were actually using inland routes as well as potentially coastal routes. Not only do we have the stone tools of, of what we think are modern humans, but we also have recently found the fossil remains that represent Homo sapiens itself. And we have found that the bones of Homo sapiens in Arabia date to also 90,000 years ago, far earlier than the 60,000-year-old hypothesis for the movement of modern humans out of Africa. Our findings are relevant because, uh, first of all, it challenges the traditional view about the movement being only 60,000 years ago. So we have multiple dates, of course, uh, from 200,000 years ago on upwards. And this challenges the, the idea that there was a single migration. So in fact, we think there were multiple migrations out of Africa, not just 60,000 years ago. Our findings are also relevant because we have found many hundreds of archaeological sites in the interior zones of Eurasia, including Arabia. And that means that coastal routes might have been used, but we also know that inland routes for the migration of humans took place in terrestrial settings. And so, altogether, uh, we think the traditional theory of 60,000 years ago and coastal routes has been shown to be wrong by our research. Now, uh, what's really important to consider here is the role of climate change as a driver of out-of-Africa migrations. So during warm uh, and wet intervals, we find plentiful archaeological sites along rivers and lakes. But however, during dry intervals, when deserts expanded, we no longer find paleontological or archaeological sites. So this means that fluctuations between warm and wet intervals and dry intervals is very important to consider when we think about out-of-Africa migrations. So it led to either the expansion of humans during certain periods, but it may, may have even led to the demise of humans in certain parts of Eurasia when things got bad. And this, of course, is very relevant to us today because we are very interested in the role of climate change and what effect does it have on society today. And so, you know, these lessons from the past can be very important in thinking about uh, people today. Well, I've been spending about 30 years on uh, doing surveys and excavations and what we call the southern route of, uh, out of Africa and looking at places like Arabia and South Asia. However, uh, northern territories up, uh, in places like Russia and China have been underexplored. And so I think it's very important to be doing 
a lot of field work in places that we know very little about. So that we have major geographic gaps in our knowledge about, uh, about many parts of Asia. We have started new research in terms of northern routes out of Africa. We've begun to map uh, some of the territories up, up in the north and northern latitudes. And in fact, we've even started some field work. So we have a team uh, in Mongolia uh, looking for caves and looking for ancient lakes as well as archaeological sites in order to show that modern humans were not only employing southern routes out of Africa, but also using northern routes to get across high latitudes. If we can understand the southern route combined with uh, new knowledge obtained about the northern routes, this will tell us uh, something about the, obviously the movement of modern humans out of Africa and it will tell us a lot about uh, you know, how did they cope with environmental change. Uh, it'll tell us something about their adaptations through time. And this will lead to revisions of out of Africa theories. And so all of this uh, is very important because it tells us something about us as a species. Uh, and it tells us something about us and our ability to cope with environmental change now and the future.